This promises to be an interesting mission. BF109K Recon. I don't know what this is. I don't think there was an equivalent in the Falk Wolf 190 campaign. Now they've so far they've run pretty parallel, like you know, take off, take off bad weather, you know, recon, shoot down the transport, all that. Pretty much the same thing in different weather and a different aircraft, but this one is different. In this mission, we will try some basic navigation to get towards Nova Rossus. Take off and circle back over the airfield toward the coast. We want to follow the coast, staying as low as possible to avoid detection from enemy radar. When we reach Nova Rossus, we will turn into the harbor, climb over the city, and want to be moving fast, as we will no doubt attract the attention from enemy air defenses. Follow the instructions to fly to the destination. Look at this. Eight P-51 Mustangs as a threat, and six ZU gun emplacements. So I don't know what, what, what this mission has in store. Let's uh let's see where this goes. Let's see where this goes, Morty. In this So let's kind of get an idea here. I didn't look at the flight plan, so I'm going to take off and head kind of south, maybe southwest, skin the coast down here to Novo, turn into the harbor and fly back up that way. All right, well, so I'm going to take off and do a left turn. Let's we'll see what goes from there. What kind of weather would we have? Ground, one meter perspective. Okay, good. Low winds. That's, that's what I want to know. All right, let's take this beast off you know for a daytime only fighter we sure seem to be flying a lot in the dark Don't stall, don't stall, don't stall. Okay. Hey, my takeoffs aren't pretty, but at least I'm not dead. Let's center the rudder. I think the trick is I need to learn when to center the rudder on takeoff. Because I've really got to crank down to the, to the right. Anyway, you guys don't care, do you? Let's uh, proceed with the mission. You know, flying this campaign really makes me want to go back and refly the P-51 challenge campaign. Uh, when I first flew it, I had first got the Mustang and I was just looking for stuff to learn. And I had a real bitch of a time uh, succeeding on those missions. And I've got a lot of training since then, learned a lot of stuff. I kind of wonder if it would be worth going back and trying it again. See if I could do better this time. But I, did, I do remember having major problems with some of the later missions because of the damage modeling. <clears throat> For example, there's missions where you have to shoot down hind helicopters. And I'm like, I'm hitting them, but they're not dying. Why? Um, I was just hammering those helicopters. And I posted a track on the forums once where I cheated and put on infinite ammo just to see. I'm like, how many rounds does it take to shoot these bastards down? And I, I looked at the hits, not the amount of rounds I fired, but the amount of hits I scored on that hind. <clears throat> and it was higher than the number of bullets carried in the P-51D Mustang. Okay, I see. So the Mustangs are there just for... If you go too high or something. Okay, so let's get down low. 
Hey, I'm working on it, buddy. Um, there we go. So I'm just going to skim the ground. Um, yeah, so if the hind helicopter requires more bullets than the Mustang carries to shoot it down, you got a problem with the damage model. I know the hind is known you know, as being a tough helicopter and all that, but, I mean, come on. It's just it kind of ridiculous. So I did end up... That's good. Yeah, that's actually a good point. So... Flight... Ah! Let's go with the trail. It's hard to do the damn keyboard and control formations at the same time. F9. There we go. Now I can get back to flying. Every now and then, especially when there's weather or a sunset or a sunrise in DCS, it's really nice to just take a minute and look around you and see how awesome everything looks. Just gorgeous, huh? I mean, it's nothing compared to real flying, but you know, I don't, I don't got the cash for that right now. Um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you keep hearing me say, yeah, I'm about to start my private pilot's license, which is true. I'm always about to start it. Um, but right now, actually, I would be starting it, but I'm going to be moving to another country. So I didn't want to start my training here in the U.S. and then go to Canada and have to start from scratch. That'd be a waste of money. So uh, I'm going to get to Canada, get my license there, and uh, when I come back to the U.S., I'll switch it back to a U.S. license. That's the plan, in case you care. I know you don't. But, um... Yeah, so I've been uh, studying, you know, as much as I can, reading the FAA publications, you know, Airplane Flying Handbook and Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, which has been really fun. Starting to read a little bit. Um, a little bit about instrument flights. A little bit. But uh, doing that, studying that kind of material, and then flying the uh, L-39, like I mentioned earlier, extremely helpful. It's made me much better at DCS. And that's kind of cool. We live in a time where simulation is sufficiently advanced to studying actual flight manuals help you out the simulation. Hopefully the reverse is true. Studying the simulation hopefully increases actual flight skill. Well, time will tell. Maybe some actual pilots can chime in on that, but... You know, does a flight simulator like DCS actually help you, or does it just train bad habits? I know simulation is an important part of actual flight training. But uh, I'm wondering about this one in particular. Basically, is it worth it for me to keep studying DCS to polish my skills for when I eventually go to real flight training. But it's quite pretty, isn't it? Also, for a new DCS pilots, I recommend... Um, Especially if you're coming from something else. Like, let's say, for example, you play Ace Combat. And you're like, gee, I'm ready for the next level of Flight Sim. I really want to... I mean, Ace Combat is a fun diversion. but And it looks real if you glance at it. But, I mean, come on. It, the, the physics are just stupid. 
I mean, it's fun. It's totally worth playing. It, it does help your spatial awareness and stuff like that, but um, it is not in any way representative of actual flight physics. And if you transition to DCS, you're like, what the hell is this? How do I fly? Uh, I would highly recommend the short book Stick and Rudder, which is a classic of flight training. And it'll really help you get MW50 on. Anyway, uh, if you read Stick and Rudder, if you're coming from like a more basic flight simulator and you come to DCS and you find yourself bewildered by all the physics going on, uh, Stick and Rudder will square you right away. It'll, it'll explain it all to you in a kind of a very easy to understand way. Um, and uh, Highly recommend. I think it was written... Um, Is it the 30s or 40s? It should be like required reading for you know, DCS pilots. So I want to overfly this runway. Thanks for the reminder. So I'm going to overfly this runway. We are low. And then... Um, fly over the bay and then pull up. Is that what the plan was? 600 kph moving at a pretty good clip here. Have the temptation to strafe this runway and whatever's off, off to the side here. Here comes the triple A. Man, the squirreliness of the 109k really makes me appreciate that Mustang and how uh, predictable it is. Uh, this is the same harbor that I attacked the ships in at the end of the Fog Wolf 190 campaign. I know there's AAA around here. It's going to probably start lighting me up here in a second. Yikes. Let's jink a little bit. Yeah, here's something I learned about the 109K if I'm trying to fight against it. Total flat for one means I should probably not head toward it. Um, its roll rate isn't very good. So reversals change your direction and stuff like that. Uh, let's get up high. I think altitude restrictions are lifted. Let's get out of here, man. <laughs> that doesn't look very good. Um, now pass on F3, request azimuth. Give my engine a breather. 284. Roger that. Um, that should be a vector to final. Um, yeah, so uh, if you're new to DCS and you're, you know, especially if you're picking up the Mustang or the Fuck Wolf 190. Or, God help you, the 109K here. <clears throat> and you're like, what the hell is going on? Stick and rudder will set you right. It, it, you know, it's an easy read. It's not very big. You can find it cheaply on Amazon. That's where I got it from, I think. And uh, check it out. It's You learn about the principles of flight and how lift affects things. And, you know, here's the deal. A lot of simplified flight simulators, okay, you you, you have a throttle which controls engine power and you have a stick which will control your roll and your pitch and simplified the flight sims may not even have a rudder they just kind of coordinate that stuff for you so you're gonna have to learn how to use a rudder you're gonna have to use 
learn how to use a rudder to coordinate a turn instead of just like banking on your on your side and pulling you know pulling back um, you know there's the coordinated turns are a thing and they require input from every single control you have so stick and rudder will teach you how to do that and um, you know one thing you should really take away from it is that Stick and rudder kind of explains it better than I can, but you think about how an airplane flies, it's by moving the wing through the air. And the air traveling over the wing creates lift and puts the airplane up. So if you're flying a simplified fly simulator, simplified model, basically the throttle makes you go fast and the pitch makes you go up or down. Well, that is true in real aircraft as well, but it's more complicated. Um, when you add power to the aircraft, you increase the speed of air over the wings, partially from the propeller itself, and more importantly, from the air you're flying through. So that causes you to climb. So let's demonstrate that here. I'm at flying at about roughly level. I'm in a little bit of a dive here. It's kind of hard to balance that. Okay, so I'm flying straight and level. That VSI right there, that instrument shows you whether you're climbing or diving. And I'm having a hard time managing that in this particular aircraft, as you probably noticed. But if I want to stop descending like that, I can keep my nose pointing in the same direction, add power, watch what happens. As the engine spools up, I start climbing because there's more air flying over the wings and it brings the airplane up. Let's drop that back down. I don't want to blow my engine. Which is why, uh, after strafing targets... Oh, they want me back down low? Okay. Um, I mean, yes, pitch does control your climber descent, but you use pitch and power together to coordinate that to get the desired climber dive rate. That's why coordinated flight is a thing. It's not just like this control does that all the time. I mean, they do the same, you know, aileron, you know, stick controls the ailerons in the elevator all the time, but making it, making them all, all the controls do what you want them to exactly is basic airmanship. And, you know, you'll. So you can also read the Airplane Flying Handbook by the FAA for free. You can download that from, as a PDF because it's a government publication. You can buy it if you want in hard copy. I kind of like the hard copy myself, but if you want to read that, that'll, that'll get just pretty squared away as well. It also talks a lot about different flight configurations and transitioning to tail draggers and intro to flying a glider, I think, gliders. And also um, it covers... Uh, transitioning to jets and how they're different from a propeller plane. Um, complicated aircraft like these where it has a fixed uh, a constant speed prop versus like if you look at an old World War One biplane it's a wooden propeller that doesn't really uh, change anything. It, it's always at the pitch that it's set at. <laughs> um, if you look at these uh, World War Two fighters and more modern aircraft uh, even look like a Cessna 172, it has a, a lot of them have a constant speed prop where you can set the RPM um, with a control and the uh, plane kind of automatically adjusts. Hey, you, you know what? Just read about it. It'll explain it better than I can. That's one of the things you have to learn in DCS. So, okay, I could quit. But what I'm going to do is practice a landing, because who everybody knows I need that. So uh, I'm going to overfly the airfield, join the downwind leg on the other side. Wait, what am I? What? Are, no, actually, I'm doing. 
going to join an overhead pattern. They never clear me from landing until I'm like wheels down, you know. So, whatever. I just kind of do it as a formality. And that's one thing I, I, I noticed um, BMS does a lot more effectively than DCS does is uh, ATC. ATC and BMS is actually pretty pretty good. All right, flaps down full. Coming in a little fast here, but let's chop the throttle back. I'm going to shut off NW50. Not that it matters at this throttle setting. Okay. Passing the key point. Uh, let's see, I'm going to aim for that last little yellow light. Still too fast. And I could shut off the commando garage. Increase prop pitch. Give me a little more control over this. Turning on the base. Yeah, um, somebody, was it Nerdy1000 something or other? Uh, YouTuber? Commented on my landing previously and said, hey, why don't you shut off the commando garage and just use manual prop pitch, prop pitch control and set it for max? To give you more... Uh, speed control as you come in for a landing, which is exactly how you do it in the Mustang, because it doesn't have the commando garage. Um, I was like, hey, that's a really good idea. Thank you. So I'm trying that out right now. And it seems to be going pretty well. This is a fairly smooth, docile kind of landing here so far. Let's see how it goes. I'm actually a little high. And Oh, I need to lock the tailwheel for sure. You see that yellow light down below that just lit up? That's kind of an early kind of ILS system. The Falk Wolf 190 has it as well. Oh, I'm really slow. Probably too slow. Did my engine cut out? Or did my sound cut out? I don't know. Oh, that's not good. I'm floating. I'm going to track the flaps. Of Shit, this is not good. This would be a go-around in real life. Wow, I saved it. Let's see if I run off the end of the runway here. All right, that's my best landing in the 109 yet. Thanks to Nerdy1000 
something or other for giving me that tip on the prop. That was much easier. Thanks, guy. Appreciate it. And that's one awesome thing about... Uh, I've noticed about DCS players, they tend to be really knowledgeable and really helpful. So it may seem daunting to pick up DCS, but all you have to do is ask and help is on the way. I'm just going to park in the grass here because I don't really want to taxi all the way out there. All right, pretty happy with that actually. Uh, engine off, magnetos off. Let's do a proper shutdown here. Shut off the electric system. Shut off the fuel. It's probably in the wrong order. And let's get out. Let's enjoy this beautiful winter day. And again, thanks for watching, uh, guys. Uh, it's always nice to have people take interest in your interests. Later.